I immediately think, girl, what? Love when you don't see a reveal coming. Producers, what are you thinking? Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Tragnes Belgique, season two, episode four, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And wait till the end, where we will let you know who had the fabs and drabs of the week. This week's runway theme is drag at Eurovision, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a Belgian Eurovision look. But before we get into the looks, let's talk about this theme. I do love this theme. I think this is a very original theme, very unique theme. It plays on Eurovision, which is super hype right here in Europe. And I do like that Gustav was a judge this year. And for those of you who do not know, Gustav represented Belgium last year at Eurovision. The only problem I have is, this is a really random theme to put on this week. I would have expected Gustav to be a judge on a singing challenge, and then this could have followed up. That would have made a lot more sense. I don't know how Gustav being there for a political slash comedy challenge, and then throwing a Eurovision at the end of it made any sense whatsoever. But I guess this is just what we've come to expect from Drag Race Belgique. Things are just a little bit different. But enough about the theme, let's get into these looks. First up, it's Gabbana, and Gabbana is giving us Lillian St. Pierre from 1987. She is coming out in this big, gothy black gown with all the jewels all over her chest and all up to her neck. She's paired her with this big black hair, which is also encrusted with jewels. She is definitely giving you the 2024 edition of Miss Lillian St. Pierre. And she looks freaking stunning. Little darker side that Gabbana is giving us on this runway. It is not where I expected her to go. And, but more importantly, this outfit looks so expensive and so well made. It is definitely one of the better ones she's had this season. And that's saying a lot because Gabbana has been turning it out. She has been the sleeper of this season. The outfit itself is gorgeous. It's got all of the details put into it. It's definitely taking the original garment, but making it better, making it more drag and bringing it to the next level. But the most impressive thing about this outfit is that hair, mama. That hair is gorgeous. It looks so well made and so expensive. It fits the outfit from head to toe and I don't necessarily see it in the reference, but I don't care to see it in the reference because this is drag and you can do whatever the hell you want, especially if you look this good. All in all, this is a home run from her and she is definitely getting my 12 points. That's a Eurovision reference for all you Americans out there. All in all, she, she looks amazing and is definitely getting a fab. Next up is Alvida and Alvida is coming out as Gustav from 2023. That is right, she is giving you the judge's outfit. But what I love about it is that she didn't give you that traditional interpretation. Gustav, when he came out, he gave you a white jacket with pink pants and a white hat. It was definitely giving you performance attire, but it was definitely giving you more like of a basic performance attire. Alvida said, you know what? I'll take the inspiration and I'm going to run with it and I'm going to give you drag, mama. She gave you the biggest hat. She gave you nice frilly pants that move while she walks down the runway and she wore like no top with a sort of white capelet on top. She is definitely giving you a much more fashion, artistic interpretation of Gustav's original outfit and I love it. This is how you take an outfit and spin it to make it drag, to make it next level. We are not looking for a carbon copy. We are looking for your drag interpretation of it. And Alida has been known to do things a little bit more artistic. So this avant-garde version is definitely an artistic take. All in all, it looks so well made, so well thought through, and so Alida. And that is why it is going to be a fab. Next up is Chloe Clark, and Chloe Clark is giving you a reinterpretation of Nicole's purple jumpsuit. She decided instead of doing a jumpsuit, I am going to do a bodysuit with some chaps, 
but she played it smart and gave you that little disco vibe by keeping the bell bottom pants and these bell bottom sleeves. What do you call sleeves that are bell bottom? She's definitely giving you enough of those elements that you understand the reference, but she's definitely elevating it and making it drag. It's got all of the rhinestones on the bodice and it's got the biggest blonde hair. I love this interpretation. It is so unique and so interesting. A lot more happy joyful and disco what i love about it is that even if you don't know the reference it still looks like a, like a great look i could see chloe clark getting a lot of uses out of this outfit after drag race pairing it with different things and it is definitely looking stunning all in all really well done and it's definitely gonna be a bug. Next up, it's La Verve, and La Verve is giving you Serge and Christine from 1972 Eurovision. La Verve is coming out in this white suit and this blue collar shirt channeling Serge. Initially, when she comes out, I'm thinking, cute idea, she's got Christine on the face and Serge on the body, but I was expecting a little bit more. If you're gonna give us a suit, what? I need this to be the draggiest suit you've ever done. And a plain white suit is just not good enough. But thank God we find out that this is not one, but two looks. That is right, she has a reveal. She goes ahead and pulls off her white jacket and white pants to reveal she's no longer Serge, but she is Christine. She is now in this light blue flowy gown with these blouse top that's slightly see-through and she is giving you this pale blue fantasy. I love this. I didn't see this one coming and I love when you don't see a reveal coming. She's definitely giving you the full Serge and Christine. She's definitely giving you both of the people, not just one, and she is definitely stepping up her pussy, which we love to see. Now, I will say that both outfits were missing that little extra, that little zhuzh that I would want it to take it to the next level, but I love that she's doing two looks in one. But because she's given us two looks and I didn't see that reveal coming, it is definitely gonna be a bug. Next up, it's Morphe, and Morphe is giving you Ovo Fernique from 2021. Girl, I know I butchered that name. Let's just skip it and go on to the next. But she's coming out in this black sequence dress with this frilly hair and these sort of polka dots all over her face. When they flip to the inspiration picture, I immediately think, girl, what? First up, she did herself a huge disservice by choosing such a basic inspiration look. The original attire was literally a uh, turtleneck with a sparkly skirt and so she did a sparkly dress. When you don't have a strong inspiration picture it's hard to really go anywhere. I think had she chosen a different person a different outfit it would have really helped bring this up. Now that being said I do like that she decided to switch it up and make it more drag but the only thing that's keeping these two outfits together is really the black sequins fabric and I don't know that that is enough to say that this is that interpretation. When I saw Morphe come out with the hair and with the polka dots on her face I was thinking that this woman would have had a polka dot dress and probably the same hair, but that she does not. I really feel that Muffet went in her own direction and tried to do her own thing and kind of like took the inspiration as like an afterthought and really didn't run with it. If you look at the gown, the gown looks pretty basic. It is just your average dress that you probably bought at an expensive mall store. It doesn't feel custom, it doesn't feel original, and it definitely doesn't feel good enough for dry grain. This almost feels like the exact dress that Arancha Castilla Mancha made on UK vs. The World, and she made it in the workroom in 24 hours. So that goes to show you the level that is attained here. All in all, I feel like Morphe is going from bad to worse, and I feel bad because I really like this queen and I had high hopes for her this season, but she's just not turning it up on the runways at all. All in all, this is yet again for Mafe gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Star, and Star is coming out as 2008 Ishtar. She's coming out in this red and white dress, and immediately I think to myself, this looks like a candy cane. Lo and behold, when they flash the inspiration picture, you realize that actually, she did a good job in making the same dress. It's unfortunate that her inspiration dress is just ugly in the first place, so obviously she was gonna do an ugly gown too. This is so Eurovision, it's probably supposed to be camp and stupid, 
and I kind of love and hate it. I feel like it kind of works. Uh, that being said, I wish that Star took this as an inspiration and elevated it as opposed to making it a carbon copy of it. But we're not done. She rips off her red dress to reveal another red dress. She rips off her black hair to reveal another black hair, but giving you two completely different silhouettes. This time she is Ixandi from 2004's Eurovision, so she's giving you two Eurovision characters and not just one. I'm so glad that she did this reveal because it was kind of needed. The first outfit wasn't strong enough on its own, so I'm glad she had this second outfit. The only problem I have is that she's given us two completely different Eurovision characters, and there's no rhyme and reason why these two are together. I think La Verve did a much more intelligent interpretation by giving you this duo and giving you both sides of this duo. This just felt like two looks for the sake of two looks. Also, if you're going to do a reveal, why not do a completely different reveal? Why are you going to do another red dress and another black hair? I wish it was someone that was blonde or something that was blue. Really give us something different and memorable. All in all, this wasn't that bad. I think her having two looks in one really helped and definitely elevated her up. Neither outfit was the best, but both outfits together definitely give her a wow. Next up, it's Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is coming in as 1981 Emily Starr. She's coming out in this pink Grecian goddess attire with these sort of gladiator elements thrown throughout. The gown itself looks super cool. It's definitely flowing and giving you that Grecian goddess look. I love this juxtaposition of the hard and soft together and I love that she added a lot more of the hard jewelry to make you feel something new, something original and not just like your basic typical Grecian goddess look. I think that the hair is a really cool interpretation of the original hairstyle but definitely making it a little bit more drag and a little bit bigger. The only problem I have have is with the choice of the color pink. The original outfit was white and honestly I think this would have looked better in white. If not white then maybe a silver or something that shimmers a little bit. I think that because it's in pink you don't necessarily associate it to the original garment. Once you see them side by side you're like oh yeah that works. But as an individual garment the garment does look well and does walk beautifully. As she walks you can see it flowing and it definitely works. All in all it's pretty good and Lulu Velvet did it again and that is why she is getting a bow. And that is it for this week's runway. Oh my god, y'all, this I think was the best runway that Drag Race Belgique has had. Lots of high ratings. Maybe I'm just in a good mood because I feel like I've barely dropped anyone this week, and that is not normal for Drag Race Belgique. But before we get into my fabs and drabs of the week, which I know you guys are all waiting for, we need to take a minute to talk about the controversy. During the commercial break, two of the queens decided to go look at the judges' notes and see what they said about them. Now, this is very improper protocol. I think that had I been on the set, I might have done the same thing. But what I kind of am disappointed about is how the show treated it. This could have been such a moment. The one thing that we are missing from Drag Race Belgique is the drama. Where is the drama? And this could have given it to us. It could have been that Abby oh my god moment. It could have been that, that Vivaldi telephone moment. It could have been that Drag Race Italia season one fight that still nobody to this day knows what's going on. We need those moments and this could have been it. Producers, what are you thinking? Anyway, enough about my rant. Let's get into why you guys are really here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Morphe. She's in fact the only one I drabbed this week. Everyone else kind of turned it up and it was just too little too late for Miss Morphe. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Gabbana. I think this is such an Excellent look, a really interesting interpretation, and she looks stunning. I would wear this look. I want this look, especially that hair. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand followers by the end of the series, and we are getting very close. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.